another problem in this whole debate, and I know this is not a very popular opinion, but it, it, it's fundamentally based on the assumption that the uh, U.S. will continue to be a political system dominated by two parties. And the more all of things unravel since 2008, before, even before, uh, there's plenty of room for that uh, two-party domination to, to collapse because there is plenty of room in the middle that is completely an orphan right now in terms of who actually represents that. Uh, I think Colleen's right to say Joe Biden is not same old. He is same old to the extent that he's been part of this system for quite some time. But when you see him campaign, when you see him with that, with that, with that energy, uh, it, it seems that he perfectly understood and adapted to the Trump politics reality. But how do you reconcile uh, Joe Biden with Bernie Sanders in the very, very same uh, uh, party? I, I don't see that happening in the long run. You can't compromise the two? They don't, they don't belong in the same party? Yeah, I actually respectfully disagree on that point. Uh, I think what I've seen in the past week, my big takeaway, uh, if we looked at the last Democratic debate, it was incredibly contentious. The candidates were shouting over one another, and it left people with the, the idea, the image, that uh, the party was totally at odds. But in fact, we have similar, you know, the same motivations and a lot of the same end goals and just really different approaches for how to get there, particularly between Sanders and Biden. But because we have those same end goals in mind, I think that there is a lot more room for unity than we might give credit to. I think that the, pers the personalities of the actors involved in the leadership of the sort of two wings of the party are problematic. But I think that at the uh, level of people interacting with their friends and neighbors and other Democrats, there's actually a lot of room for common ground. 